So pretty much every smartwatch or sports watch on the market today has a heart rate sensor, and these sensors collect all sorts of different kinds of data about your health, fitness, and overall wellness. And these sensors can range from everything from being super, super accurate to being hot pieces of garbage, but even with the most accurate sensor out there, if it's not worn properly, you may not be collecting accurate data. And there's also some other factors to consider other than just how you wear it, which can contribute to accuracy. And with that, what I've got for you today are some tips and tricks on how to get the most accurate heart rate from your smartwatch or sports watch, so all that health and fitness feedback like your heart rate, breathing rate, and VO2 max is going to be as meaningful as possible. So the first thing we should talk about is just simply how to wear a watch to get accurate heart rate. And it may sound kind of silly to talk about how to wear a watch, but with these types of sensors, it can actually make a pretty big difference. The heart rate sensors that are found in most smartwatches are optical heart rate sensors, meaning that they shine light, which then penetrates the skin and tries to detect heart rate along with some other data through blood flow. And with these types of sensors, they tend to be far more accurate when there's a lot of flesh, like let's say your upper arm, and far less accurate when there's only a thin layer before bone, like let's say your hand. And then right in between, we have the wrist, which funny enough, isn't necessarily necessarily the best place either for these types of sensors to collect accurate heart rate, but that's what we're dealing with because that's where we wear our watches. But there is an optimal location where we can wear our watch to get the most accurate results. So when we look at how most watches are typically worn, you'll see everything from right above the wrist bone, sometimes a little bit looser and below the wrist bone, and then sometimes a little bit higher. And for normal everyday use when you're not working out, it's probably okay to just wear your watch about a finger's width above your wrist bone. But for workouts, it's probably best to aim to wear your watch higher up, about two finger widths above your wrist bone where there's more flesh for the sensor to work with. And along with placement, we also need to talk about how snug you should wear your watch. So with these types of sensors, movement is generally not a good thing where if your watch is loose and it's kind of bouncing around, that doesn't give the sensor the best shot at collecting the most accurate heart rate. Additionally, you also don't want any errant light leaking in between the sensor and your skin. So how snug you wear your watch is pretty important. And in general, you basically want to have it snug enough so it doesn't move around, but not too tight where it's constricting blood flow. And one more thing to consider here is the size and weight of your watch. So what I've found over the many years of me testing Testing these watches is that with larger and heavier watches, well, they tend to bounce around on my wrist a little bit more. And in general, I tend to see less accurate results with larger watches. So take for instance, the Phoenix 7X and the Phoenix 7S that I have right here. Well, both of these have the exact same fourth generation elevated heart rate sensor, but I tend to get more accurate results out of the Phoenix 7S just because it's a little bit lighter, it's a little bit smaller, and it doesn't bounce around as much. Oh, and really quick, if you're finding the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and just hit that like button down below. It's a small little thing that you can do that'll help this video and the channel quite a bit, and I appreciate it. And then in regards to size, depending on your anatomy, your wrist bone may protrude a little bit like mine does, which actually may lift the watch up slightly, especially with a larger watch, which doesn't allow the sensor to sit flush on my skin. So it's not necessarily all about how good the sensor is. The size and weight of the watch also can be factors. So this is a case where bigger may not be better. And then another factor in getting that nice snug fit is the type of band they're using. So most companies include a band with their smart watches or sports watches that have a pretty good amount of stretch to them to get a snug but still comfortable fit. But there's bands like leather bands and metal bands that may not have much or any stretch to them at all. So with those types of bands, you won't be able to get that nice customized snug fit that you need to get accurate heart rate. I find the stock bands on polar watches to be pretty good. Garmin does a good job in this department too, and then Chorus actually does a really good job here too, where these are super stretchy and you can get a nice, snug, comfortable fit. The stock watch bands and Apple watches, they're okay, but they're not going to be quite as good as the sport bands that they have, where you can get a really customized fit, plus those are going to be a bit stretchier. Now let's say you have the best fit, the best placement, and the best heart rate sensor, and you're still not getting accurate heart rate results. Well, at this point, you may just wanna try wearing your watch on the other wrist. Our anatomies are different from arm to arm, and you may get better results from one wrist versus the other. And then one more thing you can try if you're just simply not getting accurate heart rate is to also flip the watch over where the sensor is on the underside of your wrist. I've heard that works for some folks as well. Now there are some factors that may contribute to more or less accuracy that have nothing to do with how you wear your watch. And these are gonna be things like skin thickness, skin tone, as well as tattoos. So for me, I don't have a super dark skin tone, but certainly darker than some others. And this is where I have seen some varying results in testing compared to let's say my buddy Ray over at dcraymaker.com who has a lighter skin tone. And on some of his tests, he's been able to collect more accurate heart rate data. And obviously both of us know how to test and wear these types of watches. And I'm not necessarily saying that's a general rule of thumb or anything like that because sensors from different companies can act differently because because of how the companies actually implement their sensors with different colored LEDs along with their algorithms. 
And then another factor that can lead to inaccurate results are going to be tattoos. So as you can imagine, tattoo ink, since it's embedded in the skin, can block the light that's being emitted from these sensors. But I have heard of a little hack where you can place a clear epoxy sticker over the heart rate sensor, which can somehow trick the sensor into getting accurate results. I have not been able to independently verify this, but my buddy Daniel, he did try this with his Garmin Venue, and he said it worked. But it's just something cheap and easy that you could try if you happen to have a tattoo under your wrist-based heart rate sensor. And funny little side note, I actually originally wanted this tattoo on the top of my arm, but with where this would be right here, it would actually be right underneath my heart rate sensor, and we can't have that. And then to get the most accurate heart rate for workouts, what I'd suggest you do is start your watch maybe a minute or two before actually working out. And this allows your watch to get a baseline before your heart rate suddenly rises. So if you watch many of my reviews, you'll notice that in nearly every single watch, the review has a tendency of not tracking accurately for the first minute or two in a workout. And this is even on the most accurate sensors. So what you can do with, let's say, a Garmin watch is select the activity and then maybe hang out for a minute or two before pressing start. And then with an Apple watch, I do the same sort of thing where I just go to select the activity, but wait a little bit before actually pressing start. And then the same thing goes for watches like Chorus, Polar, etc. Now there are some activities that are simply just not ideal for these types of sensors, regardless of how snug you wear them and how good the sensor is. And these are gonna be activities that involve a lot of varying arm movement, wrist flexion, and a lot of vibrations or bumps. And examples of this would be stuff like weight training where you're gripping dumbbells along with having many different kinds of arm movement. High intensity interval training is about the same here where there's a lot of variation. And then there's gonna be stuff like cycling outdoors. So with road biking, there's the possibility of vibrations and bumps in the road moving around the watch. And then with mountain biking, you have lots of gripping on the handlebars along with tons of vibration with rough terrain. And then additionally, swimming can be a challenging activity for these types of sensors because there's the possibility of water getting in between the sensor and your skin, which can throw it off. And then with cold weather activities, well, with cold weather, what can happen is that your capillaries can shrink, which can lead to inaccurate results. And with these types of activities, this is where using an external heart rate monitor paired with your watch is going to be your best bet. But with external heart rate monitors, you basically have two different flavors, a chest heart rate strap and then an arm heart rate strap. Chest heart rate straps work off of electrical signals from your body, and these in general deliver the most accurate results you can get, but they may not work perfectly in cold weather or if your skin is really dry. And then with arm heart rate monitors, these are usually optical heart rate sensors, just like the ones that are found in watches, but these these have an advantage over watches because these are taking readings in a more optimal place in your body where there's more flesh like your upper arm. Arm-based optical heart rate sensors are in general quite good, but there can be a few seconds of delay with these types of sensors in reporting your actual heart rate in real time, but for the most part, they are very reliable. I already have a video on some good budget chest heart rate monitors that I can suggest, as well as a bunch of reviews on different optical arm heart rate sensors that I'll have linked down in the description below. Now, I do have a little trick for you, though, that I found to help increase heart rate accuracy with stuff like, let's say, mountain biking, and that's going to be something as simple as this wristband or sweatband that I have right here, and I sort of stumbled upon this, stumbled being the appropriate word. So so with stuff like mountain biking, well, I can take a spill from time to time. Hey, it just kind of happens with that type of activity. And what I've learned over the many years of me testing or reviewing these watches is that I need to protect these watches while I'm mountain biking so I don't break or scratch something before actually producing a video on it. And trust me, this has happened on more than one occasion, and it's definitely a challenging email for me to send a company and say, hey, I broke your thing. Sorry. So what I do now for rougher mountain bike rides is I just simply use one of these wristbands. And I use ones that are pretty snug and I just slip it over and this helps protect the watch in case I crash. But what I found is that this also prevents the watch from bouncing around on my wrist. So this is immensely helpful, especially with larger and heavier watches in collecting a little bit more accurate heart rate data when mountain biking. And then lastly, in regards to the actual feedback that your watch is delivering to you, you also want to make sure that your personal details like your height, weight, and age are updated correctly in the watch or the accompanying smartphone app because subsequent data points like your calories burned, it depends on some of that data. So make sure that data is updated correctly along with your heart rate zones to get the most meaningful feedback. So there you go. Those are just some tips and tricks on how to get the most accurate heart rate and feedback from your smartwatch or sports watch. And if you have any suggestions on anything that I didn't mention in this video, definitely make sure to leave those in the comment section down below. And on your way down there, if the information did help you out at all, don't be shy about hitting that like button. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.